Hey guys, Winston at Carbide3D here. Earlier this month, I was at the inaugural Fusion 360 Academy event in Portland, and among other tips, tricks, and suggestions I picked up was a new perspective on high-efficiency milling techniques. If you already use adaptive toolpaths, congratulations. You are a practitioner of HEM. You're achieving high material removal rates while utilizing a healthy portion of your end mills flutes, distributing wear across a larger portion of your cutter so that it lasts longer. Back when I was developing the Carbide Cruiser longboard, I chose an adaptive recipe where my axial depth of cut was 2-3 to three times deeper than my radial depth of cut. But after sitting through a high efficiency milling session in Portland, I started wondering if my tool pads could be pushed further. What if I took things to an extreme, reduced my radial depth of cut, and plunged way deeper? Furthermore, what if I started taking into account chip thinning? What would that look like? Would it even work? There was only one way to find out. Let's take a look at some experimental speeds and feeds based on some high efficiency milling principles. I'll be using the 278Z quarter inch single flute end mill for this test. Cutting parameters are as follows. 18,000 RPM, 50 inches per minute, quarter inch depth of cut, and a 0.01 inch optimal load. The 50 inch per minute feed rate comes from a desired chip load of 1 thou per tooth. When you're taking shallow radial cuts, the amount your cutter initially bites into the material with each revolution is less than if it were doing a full width of cut contour. A slotting 2D contour with my single flute end mill would hit a 1 thou chip load at 18 inches per minute, assuming I was at 18,000 RPM. Here, look at this graphic from Harvey Tool. Notice how the chip thickness tapers to near nothing at the back of this climb cut. With shallow radial cuts, this top portion of the chip never has a chance to form. So to make sure the chip you cut starts off thick enough to shear cleanly and sequester heat, you need to feed forward faster. How much faster? In this case, 260%. Hence, 50 inches per minute. One thing to note with cuts like this is how long these chips are. If you had a higher helix end mill with smaller flutes, you could get into a situation where these chips don't clear fast enough, and then they would eventually compact in the flutes, clog, and lead to cut failure. That's what happened here when I tried a 3 flute end mill with a similar adaptive recipe. It worked for a while, but eventually the cutter clogged and I had to abort the program. By the way, that level of aluminum shredding mayhem should be reserved for spindles with at least a kilowatt of power. That 3 flute cutter takes 3 times the torque to run, and I was maxing out what my compact router could handle. Another word of caution is that the chips coming off a cut this aggressive are going to be quite hot. Shearing metal across such a large surface area releases a lot of heat, and despite your best efforts at maximizing chip load, a good amount of it will still go into the part so it will get quite warm to the touch if you're doing a lot of material removal. When I made my aluminum longboard, I was taking a small enough cut that the part acted as its own heatsink. With a cut this aggressive, you can't passively shed heat fast enough so I wouldn't recommend running these speeds and feeds indefinitely. As is, I'd only use speeds and feeds this aggressive if I needed to blast through 2 or 3 cubic inches of aluminum really quickly before transitioning to finishing toolpaths. With a stronger air blast though, or better yet, a little mist coolant setup, you might be able to sustain a cut like this for much longer. Despite those caveats however, I'm still pretty happy that I found an aluminum machining recipe that basically doubles the material removal rate I thought was possible on a Shapeoko with a stock Z-axis, router, and drivetrain. Even if you don't end up pushing your shape oko to the limit, and I wouldn't blame you if you chose to play it safe, this was a pretty scary test to undertake, I hope you've gained an appreciation for the principles behind high efficiency machining. I've personally never fully realized the potential of minimizing radial depth of cut to maximize axial depth of cut and speed. To me, this really opens the door for some crazy machining recipes that I can't wait to explore, and it's certainly opened my eyes to what a stout desktop CNC router is capable of. Good luck and have fun making some chips of your own, folks.